Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Everything My Note. I'm Andy Batiz and today I'm talking about tables and I'm going to show you how you can create some really cool visual layouts and structures to your pages using tables in OneNote. Alright, let's get straight into it. We're talking aesthetics and tables and how you can use tables to make some really cool looking mono pages. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like the videos that Nathan and I put out, make sure you hit the little bell button so you get notifications every time we bring out new stuff. But aesthetics tables, and this is one that I'm very passionate about. I love tables and I love integrating tables into every one of my OneNote pages. So this is just an example of a OneNote page. And this is probably how my OneNote pages started off, to be honest, with mostly just text with inside a text container and just scrolling down the page. As you can see, if we add in tables, you can see the difference in how that page looks. Now, it's all nice and together. We've got the use of shading here by in by clicking on that table cell, going up to our table option and filling that whatever color you want. I've got some tables within tables, which is a really cool little feature where you can keep it all nice and neat together. And I was able to put you know, images in my cells and you can see it takes up a lot less space on your page as well. Even got a little self-assessment at the bottom. And another one is an example of a science experiment and how you could sort of set that up. You could set that up as a bit of a template and then you're just sort of reusing that every time you went and created a science experiment. I'm gonna go through and show you a couple of examples for most of the teachers and how you can use tables and shading to sort of take your one-up pages to the next level, but also for a pedagogical approach, some of the advantages of using tables in your, in your worksheets. The first one is a pedagogical key. I'm gonna head across to number one. Looking up here is we've got instructions in yellow, stimulus in that sort of purpley color, and the student's answers are in green. Now you can set this up however you like, you can choose whatever colors you like, but it sets a really good present for the students. And if you have that consistency across your pages and your worksheets, the students always know that when I need to read something, it's gonna be in yellow. If there is a stimulus, it's gonna be in purple and anything that I need to answer, I'm looking for that green shading as well. The next one I'm gonna talk about is differentiation. So I'm gonna head down to reason number three, but you can see I have another worksheet here. Again, we're making use of lots of tables, but the one I really wanna focus on is this one here. So you can see we have a challenge question here. Now you can take this to whatever level you want. This is a very base level of differentiation, but again, I'm using tables and the shading to create three different levels of questions. Now in this one, the students have to choose one of these questions and they're each categorized. I guess they start off quite easy and it's a gold, silver, bronze setup. So you can see I've got some little emojis there to help assist as well. The third one I'm gonna talk about is a gradual release of responsibility. Now Nathan does have a video on this. So if you wanna to go to our YouTube channel and find how he creates and set these up, do that. But I'm gonna talk more as coming from a tables perspective and how you can use it for tables. You can see here, I've used a bit of a pedagogical key as well, and using some shading where we've got the I do, we do, you do together, and you do alone, and using the different colors. So we've got purple, yellow, orangey color, and a green. And then you can create these different questions and setups with your students, and using those things, the students, again, using that consistency across your worksheets, the students then start to figure out what it is that they attempt together, what are some of the things they do as a class, and what are the things that they have to do on their own. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is how you can use tables to create group work. And there's a couple of different options here. You can do a little bit of this in the collaboration space, but you can also have some set up in the students' private sections as well. So a couple of this, this first one is an example of something you might set up in the collaboration space, or you could even use the collab space permissions. I do have a video on that if you're interested in going and learning about how to set up collab space permissions. So you could see, again, using tables, using shaded, I've put in some little images there, but a few tables within tables to create a little box for the students to work towards. We're looking at dinosaurs in this example, and each group would go into their allocated group, group one, group two, group three, group four, click on their dinosaur and start answering the questions related to that. The next two are examples that you might push out to students as an individual page. So it'd be pushed out into the private section. This is an example of a think, pair, share and a snowball activity. 
And the last one I'm going to talk through is another section where you might use the icons like Nathan's talked about in his previous video and some shading to allocate specific answers to the student. Whoever's allocated student one, the Bunsen burner, and you could have the names there obviously as well. They know they need to go and answer any question that has either a Bunsen burner or they're looking for that green shading. So you can use both or you can use one or the other. Depends how you want to set it up. So there you go guys, that is Aesthetics Tables. Thanks for watching. Ciao.